YouTube and Facebook friends. Uh, this is Ember Tilton here. We're going to be starting uh, on the workstation PC build here. This is a Corsair build uh, for the most part as much as possible. And the first thing we're going to do without delay, we've gotten everything out of the box and thrown away all the extra packaging for the most part, screws and stuff laying around. Exactly what you want. Messy workstation. Probably a great idea. Uh, the power's not plugged in. Uh, box is ready. Corsair box here. Gigabyte motherboard. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the processor. So um, we had to undo this clamp, but also uh, I'm told I must remind you to save the little lid um, because if you ever had to return your motherboard, they wouldn't give you your money back. Um, so i7 processor. Oh, geez. Don't drop it. Don't touch it on the bottom or the top. Has a triangle in the corner and there's a triangle on the motherboard here and those need to be lined up and it should drop right in make sure it's set and there you have it and we're gonna uh, go ahead and clamp that down it clamps in with that screw there and this arm uh, fits under there like that. Now we have a cooling fan. This is a special cooling fan um, that comes pre-equipped with cooling paste, but what's special about this is it's a copper um, heat contact. And so um, that transfers heat a little bit better. Other than that, it's not that special. It's an Intel. Um, and so I've never done one of these before. The difference here is that it doesn't use screws. It uses um, these clip things. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I'm gonna put a little bit of thermal paste here. Also called thermal grease or thermal, I don't know. Cement? No, it's not called cement. I call it that in the other video, but then the guys at the computer store laughed at me and said that that's not what it's called. Oh. Computer Renaissance, Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, a great store where you can buy parts for your computer and uh, with helpful staff that will teach you everything you need to know about building computers. Or, oh, that's plenty. Uh, that's, that's about right. That's a big grain of rice there. That's a lot less than I did on the last one. Um, really, it's not important. I probably don't have to use any because this particular one came with its own, but that's weird and dried, and I don't understand what that is. So uh, I'm just going to... Put that on. If somebody comments and says, "What did you do? You can't use both the dry and the wet thermal paste." It's gonna, you know. Then I'll take it apart and Is do it. Is the cord it, in the right spot? Do it over again. Right? Well, I figured the writing should be upright, and so let's see how these guys go. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yikes! I guess that's right. And then you probably lock it. Does that make any sense at all? No. It makes no sense. I have no idea what just happened. That's locked. Jakes, this is so scary. Why would I push that hard on the motherboard? Yeah, you have to spin it first. Well, I did it both ways. Oh, that one went right in. It's locked. Man, I like old-fashioned screws so much better. They're less scary by a long shot. Well, that one already popped in. Why doesn't this one want to go? Oh, there, just needed to be uh, talked into it a little bit. Yikes. Come on. That first one scared me so much. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm gonna. My blood pressure is through the roof now. Um, I guess that's secure. It feels tight. I would much rather screw something down than have it make those kind of sounds. Is that locked or is oh that sounded locked? Yeah, it says locked. Locked. No, is that unlocked? No, uh, I like it the other way. Just kidding. And I'm gonna have to like. Don't forget to read instructions, boys. There's no instructions with this one. Don't listen to her. <laughs> um. Sometimes life doesn't come with instructions.
Okay, so what we have here uh, is the case. I've tipped it on its side. Uh, I removed the fan because I thought it was sort of in the way. And we're going to uh, start uh, installing the motherboard. We're going to start with the, uh, the I.O. panel. And so we're going to make sure we've got it in the right direction. That goes there. So here it should pop right into place with a little bit of gentle force. Uh, come on, guys. There we go. And, uh, yep. The I.O. panel is now in place. Then we're going to go for the motherboard. And we're going to pick that up and line that up uh, where it goes. Do I have a standoff bracket or anything here I'm supposed to do? No? B. No. Screw. What? Oh, no. Man. What are these standoff guys? It looks like nothing. They're just supposed to go just like that. Okay, well I'll get my screws ready. Well, you need the right kind. What's that one? You Let's need, see. um... Oh, I know the ones I need. The ones with the uh, Phillips and flathead. Uh, they're not those, but, uh... They're... Yeah. Not those. Not those. Those are for... Uh, these ones. So let's see. That's lined up. That's going to help me know where the, um, the screws are for everything else. And uh, where does this fan wire go? It's sort of in the way that goes up here. that in gently. It's a four pin. Oh, it's tight. I'm afraid to push on things. I don't want to break anything, but it went on. Oh, and that popped into place. So now we're going to find our motherboard screws. Here we go. That's fine. How are you going to keep that from getting... It can go like that. Snug, firm, but not tightened down too far. So let's do that snug. And that one's not going anywhere. So it's just one. One won't matter, right? One, one screw loose. You're okay with one screw loose, it's when you got a couple of screws loose that's a problem. Right, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what else do we have? These guys, are those uh, supposed to be? No. No? So those are something else. Oh, those are for bigger coolers, um, water coolers and whatnot. People out there going like, oh no, face palm, what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh no, this is terrible. He has no idea what he's doing. He's dropping screws all over the place. He doesn't have a static bracelet on. Oh no. Uh, and here we go. That screw is snug. And I think which will be the last one is here up above the RAM slots. And so this is the back. We're uh, checking to make sure we've got all the screws in, and you'll see um, there's some holes marked M. My guess is that's for micro ATX, or what do we have here? No, micro M ATX A. Oh yeah, so this is these are the M holes here, and you can see that I've got uh, screws in all the A holes, um, and uh, and that means uh, we're good. I don't see any empty A holes, so. Uh, on to the next step, we're going to install the power supply. 
So, um, change of plans. PCI is next. Uh, that's what the instructions say. So I've been told I have to change uh, my course here. We're going for PCI. These guys are on sort of tight. <laughs> Take the one below it off. This is NVIDIA GeForce GTX 550 Ti. Um, so it's fairly outdated because it was the Ti. It has DDR5 and is still a viable video card for most of your computer gaming needs. The price of video cards is really just absurd these days, so I didn't go and buy a new one. Although I did buy another one of these that's coming in the mail soon, and I may try to run them in tandem. That's not necessary either. None of this, uh, the, having the video card at all isn't really necessary for a workstation computer. It will be helpful for video editing, because I like to make these YouTube videos, so. Um, there we go, that one's in. Next we have USB 3s, so this is something that might be important for a law office. Uh, just having plenty of uh, thumb drives or uh, you know, components for cameras and your mouses and your keyboards. I have a Corsair mouse and keyboard. Um, they actually require extra. I have, they take three USBs because the keyboard has its own USB port on it. So. Um, now the USB 3 is installed. I'm trying to think if I have anything else I need to install. I don't think so, although I do have a wireless card I could be installing in this. I also have a USB wireless, so I think maybe I'll stick with that for now. Uh, with the hay, I'll go grab the wireless, um, the wireless card and put that into. So what we have here is an Ethernet PCI cord. It already has Ethernet, but this is something I have, so I'm going to put it in. It's possible in a law office situation that you may have uh, internet coming in through an Ethernet cord and um, then want to network with another PC with an Ethernet cord. I don't know. It's possible. I can imagine that happening. And Wi-Fi. Now I have a better Wi-Fi adapter, but in case I want to use that for something else, and that's a USB one. I'm just going to install this um, internal PCI Wi-Fi adapter. This is an N, um, and so it's not as good as my A, uh, and so that's installed now. Um, and I think this is the right screw. It just came out of that. We've got our PCI in. The next thing they tell me is the power supply. So let's see how that's going to go here. Power supply. And let's see. I'm assuming that it goes with the label facing upright. And back in here, like so. probably some screws that we need to put in there so let's see what we got instructions align the case holes and secure PCUs uh -huh. with screws provided by your power supply they're in the power uh -huh. supply box I think these are the them too there they are Okay. I 
and now we're ready to start plugging in the power. Um, we're going to start with the main power to the motherboard first. That's this. I don't know how many pins that is, but there's a lot of them. I think it's 24 if I remember correctly. This needs to actually be clipped in first, these extra ones. I guess some motherboards might not need that many. Just a video card, six pins. Um, let's see here. get it out to show you but it's not going to come out so we'll leave it there and uh, what else do we have I'm plugging the fan we have Molex um, Molex is connected to the SATA here um, untwisted Molex powers the USB PCI port on the back USB 3 power and let's see let's see let's see the ah here's USB um, ports from the front that's the USB power going out from the motherboard to USB ports on the front Hard drive. This shells um, seat the hard drive. So on top, I'm gonna put my operating system hard drive. Okay, so we realized that the USB and some other power up here goes to now in between the power supply and the video card, which I really should have done first. But let's go ahead and install the optical drive, uh, also known as the CD drive. And so they do that. They say to pull this front plate off. Jeez, it's new, so it's on there really good. Um, and so we're gonna pull this out, squeeze those, that should pop right out. And then, let's see if it fits. Presto Changeo. And we have uh, another tight fit, but it should, it should slide in there. Oh, from the front, oh man. Nope, I've got some big screws on there, that's not going to work. Um, got to get those screws off. Alright, so this was a little bit of a pain. Uh, it wouldn't fit in, uh, first of all, where it's supposed to. Um, flat here, just like this. It wasn't the right size, it wouldn't fit. So to make it fit, I took the other plate out, got it up in the middle, where I could stretch it a little bit and bend the other piece, and then slide it down. Then it fit. Uh, I put the other plate in with it, and together um, we slid the whole thing. Oh, actually, it looks like it would slide in perfectly from the back. All right, so it slides in from the back. Don't fight the way I did. That's not necessary. There we go. Front is now installed. Our CD drive is now installed. And then we're going to hook up the SATA power. SATA power inside, um, and here's our SATA power, and that goes up in here. Oh, come on. It does go there. And there it is. The SATA power into the optical drive my USB came undone. Okay. I wonder if that's all loose. Oh 
All right, um, and then say the power to the hard drives. I managed to get the hard drives, and they go in backwards. That really messed with me. My other computer, they go in, so they're sticking out forward. But here, they come in the back. I'm going to take these two power, uh, say the power cords, and plug them in. There's one for the three terabyte uh, green, uh, Western digital green, and then the solid state. And there we go. They have power, power to both hard drives. And tuck that cord in here, and that one down in there. Somewhere, so it'll just be out of the way. Um, and then we're gonna have uh, our USB power um, and LED power for the light display on the front. Uh, we're gonna send those back through. This one I already roped in with the, uh, the power, but that can go there too. Back through. Uh, four pin power to USB back through. And then here's where we ran into trouble. The four pin power is down under there. Or not four pin, it's a lot more than four pin. Um, hmm. This is interesting. I'm looking for one with a missing pin and I found it at the very end. How is that ever gonna reach? Um, she said, that's in actually. Well, not maybe <laughs> yeah. incredibly well. Well, actually that is, Pull it out anyway, just to make sure. Um, I'm pretty, yeah, that, that looked like it was in. I uh, lined it up. What? Nothing. Something else? Yeah. So the power light, power switch, USB cords and whatnot, they, they come through here. Um, I plugged in the USB uh, before I showed you that. And then these little teeny wires go down into here. Now I didn't film trying to, sh or when I put those in, you can see them right there. That's them, the four of them, those black cords. They're teeny tiny and they go on single pins or double pins. Um, right here and so you wouldn't have been able to see anything with me trying to plug them in and it was confusing and complicated and we had to check the manual I went online uh, we found this at a Russian site uh, but your motherboard might be different um, you want to consult the manual figure out where they go hopefully those are in the right spot and nothing will blow up so next we're going to install RAM RAM is easy and fun to install so uh, this shouldn't have any trouble uh, you want to make sure the clips are all open on your RAM slots um, and they only go one way and they're a little, a little bit offset with the gap there in the middle. Um, so if you have them the right way they should pop in and then the clips will clip down and they're set. So they just go this way. If you have two you want to offset them, but if you have four, just go ahead and stick all four in. What so kind of RAM do you have? How much? These are 8 gigabyte uh, DDR4 Corsair Vengeance sticks. Um, oh, do I have that one backwards? No. Yeah, that's going to clip in. Um, they have heat shields on them, which do absolutely nothing. These uh, heat spreaders are supposed to keep it cool, but RAM doesn't tend to get too hot anyways, and the heat spreaders don't really do anything because let, releasing heat into the air is just as good as releasing it into the heat spreader. There's no benefit there. That's 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. That's amazing. I've never had that much RAM before. And it'll be as fast as it possibly can be. I probably won't be able to tell the difference. So, now, moving on. 
we're going to plug in the hard drive, uh, the hard drives, I have two of them. And I want to use the nicest cables I have for this. Let's see, these ones look kind of nice. So let's, uh, well, we'll go ahead and start with the, uh, um, two black ones well those ones will go to the hard drives and we'll use the blue one for the um, optical drive so we'll start with the optical drive put that one in and um, and the two black ones which came with the Corsair set these are a little bit more expensive than your standard ones because they have that metal clip on them so they stay plugged in uh, I don't think anybody really has a problem with them coming unclipped um, but nevertheless, they put clips on them. And that one's going to go there. And that one is going to go there. That's the right way. Come on. Didn't, I didn't hear it clip. It's going to down. Maybe it doesn't snap down because it's a solid state and it's got a smaller here. So we're going to go in there, uh, in through this way. Uh, and then this guy too. We're going to send him, uh, maybe we're going to send him in through here. why but um, on this gigabit board the SATA adapters go in this way usually they just go straight on in these ones up here are marked Express so I'm going to start with those um, figure out which way they go um, oh and my USB came undone again I don't know why that doesn't stay. That one goes in there. And the next one. I'll go in after it. And then the blue guy, I don't think this is a particularly fast uh, CD drive, so I don't see any reason why it needs the express port. Maybe I should. But let's go ahead and put him in an express. Whoop, does it not fit? It doesn't fit. So we're going to just put him in a standard SATA, SATA port. There we go. So now we have SATA power, SATA info lines hooked up. All of our hard drives um, have SATA information cords and SATA power cords. Um, Corsair, RAM, Intel, processor, our CPU has power, our graphics card has power, our motherboard has power, our USB doesn't have power because the USB cord came undone. I don't know why that keeps happening. Hmm. Plug them as well as I can. And now the only thing left are the fans, I think. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and try to install some fans. Where do, where do you want the colored one? The color goes in the front or the back? The back. Color's gonna go in the back? Okay, that might help illuminate the case better. Um, and we're gonna look for the direction of the airflow. Um, I think that there should be an arrow, but I don't see it. Uh, I'm going to assume because the other one was that the wires come out of the back and that the airflow is that way. We'll test it after it's in to make sure. So I have uh, rubber fan um, clips. And these guys are supposed to make your fan extra quiet so um, I already have the quiet 
fan and then I have the rubber clips so it's just going to be even even quieter. Um, get these through. Okay, get them lined up. Start with the back, maybe that'll be easier. And do the front. And the last one. There. Um, and go and so the fan is connected and the wire goes to any four pin fan power it looks like there's one right up there no this is a three pin fan power and we're gonna find that well there's one there but there's also one on the bottom I think one says fan front one says fan back oh yeah that one says System Fan 2, and that one says System Fan 1. So let's put this one in System Fan 1. How about that? Um, and even though that's a 4-pin and this is a 3, there is a guide. Um, so you don't have to use the 4th pin, and it lines up with the guide. There. So that one's attached. We'll put the wire up and out of the way up here. And uh, and then, so that was up in here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that, but it's it's back there. So here's the last fan. Uh, it wouldn't take the rubber. Um, if you meet with clients in their office and you have a computer, you don't want it to be distracting, loud. So. Quiet is good, but I think it's already going to be about as quiet as any computer could ever be, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. These Corsair cases are supposed to be quiet. These Corsair fans are supposed to be quiet, so I don't think we're really in any danger of breaking any eardrums. So this is another three-prong, goes to the four-prong, but there's the guide that tells us which three pins to use the bottom three in this case, and they go right there. System fan two is attached. Um, that's gonna send air flow past the hard drives, which do get warm, don't usually require a fan. Um, in this direction, we have power supply blowing air out. We have a fan on the GPU, it's a fan on the CPU, and then this exhaust fan in the back setting the rest of the air out of the back. You want the airflow to be all headed in the same direction. If not, you're not really doing much for cooling. Um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else that needs to be plugged in. I've never done this before and I'm very nervous that something's gonna go wrong, but uh, why, don't, why don't we put it all together and plug it in and, and, uh, and see what we get. Okay, moment of truth. We're gonna turn the power on and see what happens. Nothing. Maybe we have to push the power button. Okay. I think something's wrong. Am I plugged in all the way? Oh, maybe I have to turn it on. Is that one on? There we go. Now we have power. We've got some red lights on. We've got a yellow light on the on the board. I don't know what that red light means. I'm a little worried about it. Yellow lights on the motherboard. That's nice. Oh, the fan blinked. Uh, we're gonna have to find out what that yellow light means. It's really quiet though. That's nice. Super quiet uh, fan. We'll. Uh, take a closer look and uh, let you know what that red light is. So I figured out the problem. Um, the issue was that I was trying to use a monitor attached to the VGA uh, from the motherboard with the graphics card in. You need to use uh, a monitor plugged into the graphics card otherwise you won't see anything. So I did that and 
we're working. I've had to reboot a couple times as it installs drivers, but everything's good. Um, I'm uh, going to install some more uh, of the software that came with the Gigabyte uh, motherboard, and it looks like we're ready to go. Thank you for watching.